Working from home. People have been doing it for years. I'm doing it right now. But it's hard to let go of the office. Office culture is so ingrained in the fabric of our reality, it's inspired entire libraries of stock footage we've been able to use to cover this piece. Before this year, many companies saw working from home as a perk. It was more common for a boss to judge their employees' request to do so with cautious disdain. Funny how a pandemic changes things. Since the coronavirus outbreak, the number of Americans working from home jumped from 15% to around 50, and bosses are having to adapt to managing their employees remotely, without being able to mosey on over to their employees' desks right before they quickly switch tabs to a spreadsheet. To bridge the gap, companies are turning to software designed with remote work in mind. One of these programs is Hubstaff. Hubstaff is essentially a time tracking app. The key is what we do is combine that with what we call proof of work metrics. These are some additional data points that give employers some extra peace of mind while their team members are working remotely right now. Could you talk through some more detail about those proof of work metrics? Yeah, so there's several data points that uh, an employer and an employee can look at, and that includes screenshots, activity levels, such as whether they're just active on their computer or not. We really recommend that team members talk with their employers and find what the level of settings are that both sides are comfortable with. There's a lot of companies where employees don't feel like they can speak up about what they're comfortable with because the alternative is that they don't work there anymore. And that's why we really want to lead with transparency, be transparent with the employee about how the software works and the fact that they are in control of it. So they are able to start and stop it whenever they want. And then making sure they have access to all that same information that the employer does. Ultimately, what we see is the the people that are the top performers within the company, this is very transparent to them. They don't really worry about what it is recording because, you know, they're doing the work. Products in the remote workspace pitch themselves with phrases like human contact for remote teams and work better together. But while these companies pull their copy from the same playbook, they offer different levels of employee monitoring. Some products allow a manager to watch over every aspect of an employee's computer activity. And they offer what's known as stealth monitoring, meaning the software runs on employees' computers without them knowing it. Some, like Basecamp, reject the practice outright. There are a lot of managers and bosses who think, unless I can see them physically with their ass in the seat, I don't trust that they're not working, which is just such a dumb idea to begin with, right? I mean, how naive are you if you don't think that people can goof off or waste time in front of an office computer? So I think they're taking that basically unexamined approach to what work actually is, Mm -hmm. a complete misunderstanding of what motivates employees in the first place. What you really should be looking at is this is an opportunity, a golden opportunity delivered to you at the worst of times, but a golden opportunity nonetheless to reimagine what work can actually be, reimagine what uh, uh, productivity is, what good work is, uh, see those things expressed under different circumstances and blow away the cobwebs of your uh, terrible sort of perceptions of what work used to be. While a, God forbid we say it, paradigm shift in managerial ideas about work and productivity sounds like a nice idea, the nagging fear of so-called unproductive work can be a powerful force. We've been trying to scream, hey, remote work is great, it's great. And then all of a sudden there's all this influx of new companies wanting to do remote work and initially we're like, oh, excellent, welcome to the party, let me show you around. And then they go like, oh, how do I spy on my employees? How do I peek into their bedrooms? They go like, no, 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 no. Wait, that wasn't what we were talking about. That's not what I'm saying. This is a wrong path. This is a wrong turn. And unfortunately, that's exactly what happened in a lot of companies. They've turned to employee surveillance software under often the bullshit euphemisms of productivity or management or whatever you want to call it. But do you know what? If there's a webcam pointing into your spare bedroom where you're doing your work at home, that's employee surveillance. Even as the world's offices switch their fluorescent lights back on, not as many employees will be walking through those revolving doors. Companies including Facebook and Twitter have announced their employees will be able to work from home indefinitely. Whether you like it or not, do you think that work from home surveillance is something that will become more prevalent? I think the battle is on right now to set the boundaries of what's acceptable. What is in good company? What will turn you into a pariah? 
We set norms, we set boundaries all the time. These are multiple up for grabs topics right now. This is bad. This is wrong morally. It doesn't work practically. And it's simply just a, a, an incredible amount of renewed abuse towards workers at a time when we should have empathy and, and gratitude towards the sacrifices that they're making. Change happens first very slowly and then all at once. We're now in the all at once phase. That doesn't mean that every company everywhere will switch immediately to remote work. And undoubtedly, there will be managers who will have a sigh of relief and perhaps even employees too, when they get to go back to the office. That's fine. But the culture has changed. The assumptions have changed. You can no longer credibly claim that, oh, our particular brand of creative work can only happen when we're all gathered around a whiteboard in a an office. Yeah. And it seems that whenever technology comes along, people find ways to circumvent it. Do you think people will come up with countermeasures, yes, ways to kind yes. of skirt around surveillance? Yes. Whenever you see workers or humans in general subjected to forms of abuse, it is a natural human instinct to resist and to try to find ways around it. And I've seen this over and over again, both on the student side and on the employee side. Employees who otherwise had a what they thought was a good relationship with their place of employment go like, wait, what? You want to surveillance me now after all that I've done? Okay, two can play this game. I'm not going to stay any longer. I'm never going to work any overtime. I'm not going to put anything extra in. I'm going to give you the absolute minimum that I can do to get by with this. And this is why it doesn't work, right? You're subjecting people to this amount of surveillance is that you can squeeze more out of them. What you're going to squeeze out is some damn sour drops that you can't use for anything because no one wants to be squeezed.